Hey guys, Mitch here. Uh, so this is the first video in a, hopefully, a series that uh, will teach you how to develop for VR using UE4. Um, this is just going to be an introduction and like a uh, how to get acquainted with the VR functions and stuff in UE4. Um, this is specifically going to be for the Rift. Uh, I can do it another one for the Vive and stuff later, but this is just um, Oculus hardware basically. Uh, so first things you want to acquaint yourself with is uh, where the plugins are. So if we go to the edit menu and plugins uh, VR, you can see we've got the Gear VR, Oculus Input, Oculus Library, Oculus Rift. So basically Gear VR is Gear VR, Oculus Rift is Oculus Rift. Those are just the plugins you need to uh, do the rendering and stuff. Oculus Input will be the touch controllers and Oculus Library is just uh, helper functions for Rift stuff. Uh, simple HMD is just one that we won't be using because we have a rift and stuff. Um, it can possibly use for cardboard and stuff like that, but it's a bit hard at the moment. Uh, Steam VR is basically just the vibe at the moment. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to open up a blueprint and we'll just go straight into it. The first things you want to know is there are a few uh, helper functions and functions for getting values from the HMD and stuff. Uh, so to find these, it's probably easiest if we go uh, just right click on any blueprint basically and in the input tab, there we are, there's two main sub trees or whatever. Uh, you have head mount display and the Oculus library and those are basically the ones that we'll be concerning ourselves with for this video. Uh, so first things first, in head mount display we have uh, enable HMD, it's pretty self-explanatory actually. Um, basically enables HMD. You can also do this by uh, forcing into full screen with Alt Enter when you're in a standalone game or in the console just do stereo on as a command. Um, there are other ways you can do it in the I and I and stuff as well. Uh, enable low persistence mode. So I'm not going to go into what low persistence is but it's pretty much needed for a good VR experience. Uh, it's enabled by default and I usually just wouldn't touch it at all unless you specifically need to. Uh, get orient orientation and position. Uh, this is an interesting one. I'll go into what more why it's interesting in a little bit, but um, just know what's there. Positional tracking camera parameters. So if we look into this, um, we have things to do with the positional tracking camera for the Rift, and um, that's just like the camera that's sensed on top of your monitor or whatever. Uh, so the camera origin is interesting. It says it's in world space, but it's kind of in world space. It's in world space that's relative to the uh, origin of the headset in world space. So like if you want to get the actual camera origin in world space, you'll need to add the um, camera, the uh, actual in-game camera to this camera origin. Uh, these next ones are just kind of there for if you want to do any math with the camera. Um, Horizontal, horizontal field of view, uh, vertical field of view. Um, so we can think of those as just, if you have the camera like here, uh, let's go there, this little camera, um, the field of view horizontally will be this cone here, whereas the vertical one will be this one here. Easy enough, and it's in degrees, and it's, um, I believe it's half of that is the vertical, and half of that is the horizontal. Cool. Uh, and then the camera distance, it's kind of pointless. I don't know why it's there. It actually just has a random value of 100. I don't know. Um, but near plane and far plane, useful as well. Just um, if you look back to this diagram, it'll be... The distance here will be like a near plane. It'll be like a square in which anything beyond that won't be tra anything beyond that won't be tracked. Or the far plane is another square out here, which anything beyond that won't be tracked either. Um, at the DK2, it's like 40 and 250 or something like that. But the reason why these are parameterized is basically if um, Oculus want to upgrade the um, personal tracking camera in the, down the line, which it will be like the CB1 has a better camera. Um, any of the math you do with this can be updated depend, uh, no matter what uh, camera they use. So the next one, if we go back to where we were, is get screen percentage. So screen percentage is a 
very important value in VR development. It's basically um, how much, how the high, how high your resolution is with your, with your, that you're rendering to the Rift, basically. So if you have a 1080p screen, let's see, we have, so we have like a 1080p screen for the Rift. So we're going like DK2 or whatever. So it's 1080p. Um, yeah, whatever that dimension is. Um, then when you're rendering with a 100 screen percentage, you'll, the rendering, the image you send to the Rift will be uh, 1080p exactly. And so what that means is the image is 1080p, but then after distortion is applied and it has to scale it down as well, you're not quite getting the full resolution of the um, Rift. So what you need to do uh, to make up for that is render it at higher screen percentage. So instead of a 1080p image, you render it at like uh, whatever it is, 1080p times 1.5, I think or something is around a value. So then that means the screen percentage is 150. Uh, so what this means is the higher, sc higher the screen percentage is the higher the quality basically is what it translates to. Uh, but the problem, the trade-off, I guess, there is the higher the screen percentage, the um, harder it is to render. So you just want to find that balance between a higher screen percentage, so good quality, crisp graphics, or performance, and you need performance. So just finding that balance. Uh, so let's go back. So the next one, uh, get world scale to meters. And that, this is pretty easy. So um, whenever you get values from the Rift, basically, they'll be scaled by this value. So if this value is 100, which 100 centimeters, which is the basic um, default value, basically, for UE4, um, everything will be scaled one to one. So the world will look one to one. And if this is higher, then everything was scaled by if it's 200 it'd be two times so that means the ipd of the user will be scaled two times the positional tracking um, offset would be scaled two times and so that basically translates to everything looking twice as small as it was before so if you put if they set this value to 10,000, then it's like 10 times as small um, it's actually pretty cool that's how you get that effect of looking down on a tiny town but then the physics are still one-to-one -one because everything you model is one-to-one. -one. It's just this value has changed. So what else we got? C has the only tracking position, pretty self-explanatory. Is, yeah, pretty much self-explanatory. Load persistence, already gone through that. Uh, reset orientation and position. Okay, this is when I'm going to go back into the get orientation and position. So what we have to know is that the orientation of the and position of the rift is in its own tracking space. And you can see that here if I go back here and I go uh, get, uh, get orientation. I'll get the. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you see, even if you hover over, it says in the, its own tracking space. And what that means is if we have the rift camera here. And it's got like, I don't know, it's view cone here. <coughs> then its own tracking space. So what is that? What is that? So uh, by default, the Rift has a uh, initial initial position it goes off. And by default, that is it is directly aligned with the camera view vertically and one meter horizontally across from the camera. And this is just straight from the um, Oculus SDK. So that's that value there. And so then how does this help us? What is the, um, what is the offset then? So the, if you have a rift say here, it's our little rift, head straps and stuff. Cool. Then the position you get from this parameter is actually, if you look into it, it's X, Y, Z offset from this initial position here. So if we have an X, a Y, and a Z, then it 
then it is this offset here from this initial position which makes sense when you look at it like this but it's a bit confusing when you try to work with it actually in game because it's offset of this arbitrary position that's set and can be reset by the user um, so what does reset and orient orientation and position do okay so if we go back here go back I'm just gonna draw like more of a 3d camera I guess a little camera let's go with three yes <clears throat> and say we have the original position is here but the rift okay so one more thing if we're looking at this the um actual coordinate system of this point by default the x-axis is facing towards this camera so that's the x that's the y and then z is facing up and that's important for later so draw this we've got our rift it's doing whatever it does rift stuff cool so that's sitting here and um by default it's here marked zero 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 so the offset is if we move the rift this way then it has a positive x offset if we move it this way then it has a positive y offset which is cool but say we move the rift um over to oops sorry where are we over to here and so we've changed orientation as well as position now and so this is now looking in that way but if we move still if we move this way then we're still going on a positive x position because this original uh, position hasn't changed and its orientation hasn't changed the or only orientation of, that has changed is the rifts so if we move it left then it's actually positive x and if we move it forward, then it's changed to being positive Y to being, um, it's changed, sorry, instead of being positive X to be positive Y. Because this original position hasn't changed at all. So now you say, what if we use this node here and we reset it? So what does that do? So we know it resets the position. So it resets the position here so this is our new possession but then it also reset the orientation if we tell it to which means that this uh, axis here becomes this axis here where we've got an x-axis facing the forward of the rift we got a y-axis facing to the right and then we got a z-axis facing up which is cool but then what that what does that mean for our translation well if we translate the same way which used to be positive x is now actually negative y and then the same thing goes that if we go the same thing that used to be uh, positive y is now positive x which is just something to keep in mind so this i've been called out um, on it a couple of times it's the rift's orientation and position from this node is in its own tracking space which I find is actually really helpful when you're making games. Um, there are various uh, ways to get turn this from its own coordinate space into something that's useful for UE4. Um, that changes on engine version though, so I won't go over it. It was harder previous to 4.11, but now 4.11's come, it is a lot easier to get uh, useful data out of the Rift. Okay, so just keep it in mind. Moving on, all right. Uh, what else we got set clipping panes uh, that's pretty simple so if we're viewing the world then we have a clipping plane so I'm going to move too close you can see the uh, geometry clips they can just set that distance so that's the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane is uh, how far away things, things will start to clip um, you can always just look it up it's the same as in most game, gen game engines uh, what else we got? Uh, set world to meter scales. We've gone over that before. So, 
Uh, let's look at the next batch of functions. Uh, so these are in the Oculus uh, library itself. Cool. Um, so enable player camera manager for HMD. These are pretty important functions. I might do a separate video on them. Um, they're less important in 4.11 now. They've actually been kind of uh, uh, disabled in 4.11. So I'll go over that there in a separate video. Um, uh, base rotation and base offset in meters. So this is only important and it's only set once you call this reset orientation and position. And basically what it is, is it's the offset from that original one meter position away. So if we go here, it's the offset from this original position that when we reset our um, orientation. Which is cool. Yeah, I don't see how often it's useful, but it's there. So what else have we got? Uh, 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 yeah, get camera manager. I'll go into that in a separate video. Uh, get pose. Uh, this is mainly just if you want to manually set the position of the rift. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can scale it up and stuff. Um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend using it. It's there though. Uh, raw center data. So this is just getting basically the center data from the IMU. Um, it's in like accelerations meter per second, and radians per second, basically uh, accelerations, rotations of the IMU. Uh, the gyroscope basically is um, short, uh, short like fast responsive uh, rotations, but it's uh, susceptible to drift, whereas the magnetometer, uh, because of the Earth's strong magnetic field, will just act kind of like a compass and can correct for gyro mistakes. But now that we have uh, absolute position tracking, um, they're kind of less important except for rotational. Um, temperature of time is kind of not really, I didn't use it much. Oh, you can use it actually if you want to detect the tap on the side of the rift. Um, that's one thing I guess it's useful for. So what else we got? user profile this is actually pretty important and not many people know it's there um it's really important if you want to do a standing vr game because if i break out this struct um it'll give me name and gender it's really important but um the player height and eye height is very important because that means we can set our in-game player to be the right height for the player so then the floor height the height from the player to the floor can be exact so then standing vr games can feel right actually Okay, what else we got? Oh, and you got the others, IPD and stuff like that. Um, they're not entirely useful, but you can find use of, uses for them, I guess. Um, ch -ch -ch yeah, just is, yep. Base rotation. Yeah, and those are just setters of this. Get. Um, so that's basically it for the Oculus function library. Um, main things get orientation and position you got to be aware that it's in its own tracking space um reset orientation and position it's useful but you need to know what it does to the orientation and position of this node here um the next video i'm thinking i'll probably do uh tracing and kind of gaze ba gaze based interaction um that'd be fun uh but yeah that's it for now guys um see you in the next one